Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be doing a quick review and overview of the Israeli Ground Forces Tech Tree, as this was a request for a video that I received recently, and whoever made that request, seriously, thank you. My apologies, I forgot who you were, but if you remember that you made that request, you're watching this video, comment, and I will love you. That said, I'll just be doing a quick overview with the trends and play style of the Israeli Ground Tech Tree in general, as they are definitely extremely unique vehicles with unique playstyles, despite the common belief or somewhat common belief that this is just another copy and paste tech tree. That said, let me know how the video quality is on this video as I am finally able to record in 2K and at max graphics. Also, I've got my review for the Super Sherman and Merkava Mark II D linked below as they are big parts of the Israeli ground tech tree, so definitely check them out if you're either looking to buy those vehicles or you just want a better idea for how the Israeli ground tech tree plays, or is it Merkava? Anyways, let's get into the video. So that said, just to start, the Israeli Ground Forces tech tree is fairly unique in where it starts. It's the only tech tree in-game that does not start at the rank 1 or reserve level. So this starts at rank 4, so you can start really, really far into the tech tree. So if you are a relatively new player and you want to use advanced vehicles very early, this is the tech tree to do it. And uh, it starts at 6.0 BR at rank 4. And you get Super Sherman, so you have the M51W, which is the premium and the regular M51 Super Sherman. These both have 105 millimeter cannons that can fire heat FS. With the exception of maybe the Tehran 4S or the Tiger or Tager, this is probably going to be the most unique vehicle set in the entire tech tree, at least thus far, the Super Shermans, just because they are the oldest vehicles on this tech tree. And you can certainly see that they play like it, and thus far, they're actually, as far as I know, the only Israeli ground forces vehicles that can use regular heat shell. So there's a ton of heat FS in the Israeli ground tech tree, but as far as regular heat is concerned, these are the only ones. And the reason for that is because they were modified by French, uh, I guess you could say tank manufacturer, and they are equipped with French heat shells, which do a ton of damage. Again, check out that link below for my Super Sherman review. But beyond the Super Shermans, and again, it's just a very unique portion of the tech tree, we have a bunch of other tanks, and there's only two light tanks in this entire tech tree. So you have the AMX-13 and the AML-90, again, the only two true light tanks in this entire tech tree. However, the Zaklam Tiger, which, or Tager, which is an ATGM launcher, actually has the ability to scout, oddly enough, even though it is an ATGM launcher or a tank destroyer, whatever you want to call it, it does have scouting ability. Now, an interesting thing about that vehicle, just from a historical standpoint, if I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I am wrong, but I don't believe I am, the ATGMs on that were actually, if you go all the way back in their development, they were used or they were being tested for anti-tank roles in World War II because they were actually a derivative of the Rorschach X-4 rocket or missile. It was a guided air-to-air -air missile that the Germans were creating in the middle of World War II, and actually they had operational or near-operational versions of it. By the end of World War II, they were using live testing, and the X-7, which was the ATGM version, the anti-ground version of this weapon, was actually taken by the French, and they developed it into the missile that you see in-game today. So pretty cool, if you ask me. Anyways, that said, let's kind of go over the rest of it. A very large portion of the tech tree is just going to be American and British tanks. And really, you're going to see a huge chunk of those tanks between 7.3 and 9.3 BR. It's a block of tanks that has 16 vehicles overall, including the first Merkavas, so the Mark 1 and 2, the Israeli versions, the M60s and M48s, Israeli Centurions, and a T-55 that uses an American 105mm M68 cannon, which is really interesting. It is the Tehran S4 or 4S, I mean to say. But again, there's 16 vehicles in total in that block, and that's just to start. It's a huge chunk of vehicles. Unfortunately, beyond 9.3 BR, it kind of starts to suffer. There's not really too much before 7.3 BR. It doesn't really matter all too much just because it's... I mean, the Israeli tech tree starts at 6.0 BR, but really starts getting into it at 6.7. So it's just this huge block of tanks. And after 9.3, and we'll be seeing this, we'll be seeing, I don't believe there's any later versions of the Merkava Mark II D, 
But if there are, let me know in the comments below. But we have the Merkaba 3, which has a much more powerful engine over the Mark 2 II and 1. So it's got around 1,200 horsepower in a diesel engine, which is pretty much right between where the 2D and the 4 series, the Merkava Mark 4, starts. So it's right in the middle. So you're going to see a pretty decent amount of movement, amount of maneuverability out of this kind of interim design that's not currently in game but will be in the game, I would suspect the upcoming patch, probably in about three or so, two or three. But that said, the tech tree, in my opinion, is kind of split into two different play styles. So you have one that's for about 8.0 BR and lower those tanks, and one for about 8.3 BR and above. Now this line is pretty much where Israeli tanks go from being just somewhat modified foreign tanks to either being substantially modified, incredibly modified, or where Israel just decided to make their own tanks. And those tend to be at the 8.7 and later vehicles, which is with the Merkava or Merkava being prime examples of where they make their own tanks. Now, the playstyle also vastly changes along, again, that 8.0 BR line. So before 8 BR, with the exception of maybe the Super Shermans, you can pretty much play the tanks like you would have in the other tech tree. And the reason why I say the Super Shermans is because they are just so different from regular Sherman tanks that you really cannot play them like regular Sherman tanks. They're almost kind of like tank destroyer versions of Sherman tank. Anyways, that said, beyond 8.0 BR, but more so beyond 8.7 BR, you're looking at incredibly durable, up-armored, well-armored tanks that can take hit after hit after hit. From my experience with the Israeli tanks, especially the Merkavas or Merkavas, I think that it is safe to say that they are the most survivable tanks in War Thunder for the time being. I mean they can take a punch it is amazing how powerful especially like i said 8.7 and beyond but really 8.1 and beyond tanks are for the israeli tech tree i am blown away it is such an incredibly durable set of tanks before that line before that 8.0 line again it's just kind of slightly modified israeli tanks you do have some uh, re-gunned tanks like the tehran 4s which is understandable it's just re-gunned that is fairly well modified but nothing really insofar as armor again until 8.0 and beyond. Now, one thing that you also notice with the Israeli tech tree is that they get a jump start on tech. A lot of these vehicles have stabilizers fairly early, thermals fairly early, things of that, even night vision fairly early, whereas other tech trees with the same vehicles may not have actually had that. And again, the Israeli tech tree is just really, you'll be getting thermals about 0.3 to 0.7 BR in some instances earlier with the Israeli tech tree either now or in future vehicles same with night vision as well so it's just very interesting they get early ish access to ERA uh, compared to other tech trees so it's very odd how they are and unfortunately one kind of side effect from this with the exception of the super m60 essentially the Galvatesh you really don't get anything that's incredibly powerful in terms of firepower until you reach anything beyond the Merkava Mark IV. So I suspect the Mark III is going to be fairly powerful. I'm not sure what its ammunition capabilities were in real life. Of course, that will be relatively accurately reflected in War Thunder, but the Merkava Mark II, its ammunition is okay. It's not great. But again, not until you get into the Galbatesh are you really going to have anything above 400 millimeters of armor pen that isn't EFS. Of course, they have very powerful heat FS, which is really, really nice. But again, APF SDS, that's where you're going to be getting your top end damage at really 9.0 plus BR especially, because everyone's going to have some form of ERA, composite armor at that point and beyond. Now, one interesting thing, and speaking about armor, I know I've already mentioned it pretty substantially with the survivability of especially the Merkavas, but one really interesting thing that I, I encourage all of you to look at just go to the armor protection board on the Mark IV. That has an active protection system which will go off if enemy projectiles like ATGMs, for example, get anywhere near your vehicle. It'll blow them up. And it's interesting because that's the more advanced version. And that sits at the same 11.0 BR that the regular Merkava Mark IV, well, at least the lower Merkava Mark IV, I believe, or B, if I'm not mistaken, sits currently. If you do a protection analysis of the Merkavas, especially again the fours it's just insane how thick that frontal armor is the composites and all that you're getting hundreds upon hundreds of millimeters 
of armor. It's just ridiculous. I mean, it's getting close to a meter thick of armor, relatively speaking. Now, one other interesting thing is, and you can see more about this in my review that I've linked below, but the Mark II D also has increased armor over the Mark II B. As far as I know, with the exception of a weight difference, there's nothing really that makes it worse than the Mark II B. So it's a pretty interesting thing here. I mean, really, with every successive Merkava, you get more and more armor, and even the base versions of them are really, really powerful. Even the, the Gal Patesh, for example, extremely durable vehicle. So it's not even just the Merkavas that have a ton of armor. It's even lower vehicles. Again, like I said, starting at 8.0, 8.3, maybe even 8.7 if you want to go that far and beyond. You get really, really durable vehicles. So this is a very good tech tree for people that might not see an enemy first, but they know that once they do see an enemy, they know the weak spots, so they take them down. Uh, Israeli tech tree vehicles tend to not be the fastest. Once you get to the Merkava Mark IV, they become much, much faster uh, because they have the 1500 horsepower, whereas the Mark IIs are give or take around the same weight with only about 900 or a little bit more than 900 horsepower. And the Mark III, like I said, once that comes in, will have give or take around 1200 horsepower. So the Mark III, but especially the Mark IV, incredibly durable, maneuverable vehicles. And uh, the Mark II is a bit slow, the Mark I a bit slow, and pretty much everything before the Mark II and after the French light tanks, you're going to kind of have a fairly slow vehicle. Now, the Tehran 4S is fairly quick, but if you like maneuverable vehicles, if you like fast vehicles, there's a huge chunk of this tech tree that is the opposite of that. Currently, they don't really have anything insofar as light tanks are concerned, with the exception, of course, with the aforementioned French light tanks, the AMX-13 and AML-90s. Now, it is also interesting and very important to note, I mentioned before the Zaklam Tager, that is an ATGM launcher, it's just a truck, basically, and the missiles are keyboard-guided, so you actually have to use their keyboard controls, in my case, it's WASD, so it's how you would control the tank, is how you're going to control these missiles. So you absolutely cannot move while you are using this vehicle. Unfortunate, they, they actually penetrate quite well, but it's just not all that good of an ATGM launcher. It's just because you have to wait, and they are extremely, extremely slow missiles. But aside from that, you also have currently two SPAA. You have the Hovet, which is pretty much just an M163, an American M163 modified for Israeli service. I don't really believe that there's anything special about this vehicle. It plays pretty much the same as the M163. And then you have the Machbet, which is a very, very good version of the M163. So basically, it's the M163 plus a Stinger launcher. You can get Stinger uh, E or K variants, if I'm not mistaken extremely good versions of those uh, Stinger missiles. They are extremely maneuverable. It's an excellent SPAA, and uh, it sits at 9.0 BR. Plus, again, it has that, that gun system with it, which makes it extremely powerful. For me personally, the M163's cannon, which is the M168 cannon, is absolutely wonderful. It's my favorite SPAA cannon in-game. Even if it's not the best, it's the coolest sounding. It's kind of like a mini uh, GAU-8, so it's a really, really cool vehicle. But either way, pretty much kind of the takeaways I want you guys to have from this is that the Israeli tech tree, as of right now, is actually very, very well flushed out, extremely fun. Of course, there are a ton of vehicles that they can add, especially all the variants of the Merkavas, the Mark III especially. You have the uh, Mark IIA, Mark IIc, you, just tons of different vehicles, and that's not including like the Magak 4, five i believe that they both be added to run one all those vehicles i mean there's just so many off the top of my head that i can think of and i have no idea what sort of israeli vehicles exist i am by no means an israeli military expert but i know those vehicles are out there they are ready to be added so this will be a huge huge tech tree and an easy way to get to top tier very easily and also again this is a tech tree for people at least as of currently and in the higher brs of this tech tree that really prefer armor rather than mobility, or they just don't really care as much about mobility. And also they have decent cannons, but nothing amazing. So these are extremely survivable, pretty much doom turtles for every single Merkava, which again, makes this an extremely unique tech tree. That being said, please let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, you guys know the dealio. 
Let me know what you guys think about the video quality. I am so interested to hear your thoughts on it because this is the first time I'm recording like this. Either way, though, thanks again, everyone, and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.